everyone and welcome to October new releases. It's finally here, the time of year that we've all been waiting for, which is pumpkin spice latte season. So if you are thinking about having a pumpkin spice latte, you should do that immediately because I don't know why, for some reason they disappear at other times of the year. And it should also be your mission, as it is mine, to have as much pumpkin cheesecake and pumpkin pie as possible before it's all gone. All right, there are way more new releases than just this pile here from Harlequin this month, but these are just a few that I wanted to highlight to you to add to your TBR as you drink your pumpkin spice lattes. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa Latte, and you are watching the Harlequin Books channel where we talk all about romance books. All right, I have five new releases for you to check out, and one of them comes with a bonus story, so that's really like six romance books for you this month. Our first book is Rancher's Return by Macy Yates, and this is a single parent romance. So we have Buck, who has three adopted sons, and they're like 17, 15, and 13 years old. And we have Marigold, who has kind of like a Gilmore Girls situation going on, where she got pregnant when she was 16 in high school. The father went off to college, so she's kind of on her own as a single parent, raising her daughter. And the number one thing she does not want to have happen is for her daughter to get pregnant in high school. So she completely freaks out when she comes home to find her daughter making out in her bed with another guy. So she puts this kid in the car and says she's going to drive him straight to his parents' house to give his parents a good talking to. The parent happens to be Buck, who she knew from high school because, oh yeah, she thinks Buck is responsible for killing her brother. Now, Buck did not actually kill anybody. There was a graduation party and everyone was drunk driving and Buck wasn't even in the same car as her brother, but he died. And so she blames him as does the rest of the town and himself. So she obviously forgives him because that wasn't really his fault. And also they've decided that they would like their children to go ahead and date, but with a chaperone, so they're going to chaperone their kids on their dates, during which time, of course, they end up dating and then falling in love. Oh, and by the way, Buck happens to be the perfect guy. So he not only has turned his life around from being an alcoholic, he has been working for the last 20 years at a halfway house for boys. That's where he meets his three sons. They were the only kids there that don't have a dad, so he adopts them and then moves them back to his hometown, which is why it's Rancher's Return, so that they can have a nice big extended family, which is something they never had before. So Buck, as a bonus, is loaded. He has a massively huge trust fund, and he is not afraid to use it on Marigold to invest in her food delivery business. So you'll want to read this to find out what it's like to date the perfect guy. And if you're wondering what happened to the teeny bopper romance that kicked this whole thing off, well, Stick around because there is a bonus story in here, which is Rancher's December Miracle. And this shows the love story between Colton and Lily. Now this is a second chance romance because when their parents got married, they graduated from high school and they went to totally different colleges. So they decided just to break up and remain friends because they were obviously going to have to keep coming home for summers and for holidays. So they wanted everything to remain copacetic and very low key. However, they're both still really in love with each other. So fast forward a few years, they've graduated from college, they've been working out in the real world, they're both home for Christmas, and their parents conveniently are stuck behind some big flood and can't get there. So they're alone together for a little bit. And during that time, they try to work out, can they rekindle this romance or not? Next is a historical romance, The Duke Sister and I by Emma Claire Sunday. And in here, we get a front row seat to a secret and exciting Regency romance in London during the height of the season. Now, Loretta's dad would very much like her to make a betrothal to the Duke of Colchester. However, Loretta is way more intrigued by the Duke's sister, Charlotte. Now, in this duo, Charlotte is definitely 
definitely the rake between the two. And Loretta's super confused because she's very much attracted to Charlotte, but she thinks it's more in a friendly way, as in this is a friend who's kind of a rebel and challenges you to think about the world in different ways. That is until Charlotte and Loretta kiss. And then after that, it's game on. Because the only thing that Charlotte can think about and Loretta can think about is being with each other again and kissing again. So you'll want to read this to figure out how these two navigate the London Regency dating scene and still sort out their romantic feelings for each other. The next book is The Antisocial Season by Adele Buck. And this is what I would call a one-sided second chance romance. And not because they had a romance the first time, but it was one-sided. So Simon had a huge crush on Thea all through high school and has been holding a torch for her ever since then. And fast forward 14 years later, he actually gets to hang out with her in person. She's so excited. She doesn't remember at all who he is, but she looks up in the year him up in the yearbooks and she's like, oh yeah, I kind of sort of remember this guy and he's kind of sort of cute. And they are together in the Christmas season. So that's why you see all the Christmas stuff on here. But the reason it is social is because he is going to train her on how to be a social media manager. So in kind of like a traditional gender role swap, uh, Thea has actually been a firefighter for the last 10 years and she's super outgoing and friendly and Simon is an introverted but super friendly and nice librarian and he has been doing the social media for the library for many years in addition to being a librarian there and Thea has had like some performance anxieties like her cousin died or not didn't die he got, got hurt and then her like really good friend got hurt on the job and so she is like totally afraid of doing any more firefighting so she's like i'm gonna quit but the guys at the fire department love her so much they're like we're gonna give you this new social media manager job which she's actually not qualified for and has no experience in. So that is why they are setting her up with Simon just to get training. So it is finally his big chance to hang out with the girl of his dreams. And this time he works up the courage to ask her out. And she says yes to going out with him and yes to many more after hours activities. So you'll want to read this for a fun little dive into a one-sided second chance romance and how that works out. Next up is Lone Wolf and Lights by Stacey Kennedy, and this is a Christmas romance. So in here we have Willow, who has fled Phoenix, where she had an abusive ex, and she's decided to relocate to Montana, where she knows absolutely no one, but she buys a big house, she buys a bar, and she is pretty happy. And she's so happy that she decides to host a crafting night for other women who are just like her, who are leaving abusive exes and want to just talk about their recovery journey through crafting. And she makes some social media posts about it. And unfortunately, there's some internet trolls who are just not happy about it. And on top of that, she also gets some text messages straight to her phone. So they're not sure where this is coming from. Like, is it someone in the community? Is it just someone like globally? Cause it's online, they don't know. However, in locks Eli, who has been coming to the bar anyway, and he is friendly, he's super nice. He's a cowboy, he does ranching. He used to do rodeo shows. Anyways, he has some dark wounds of his own. So his sister was killed because he wasn't in town. Well, he thinks it's because he wasn't in town to protect her. So when he finds out what's happening to Willow, he jumps into protective mode and he proposes that they have my favorite romance trope, which is the fake relationship. And that way that'll deter whoever this troll is from possibly hurting her or going near her if they think that she has a big, strong cowboy boyfriend protecting her at all times. So she says, sure, why not? But I wanna make sure that we are strictly on a friends only basis. And because of her past trauma, she says, if you wanna touch me, like even tap me on the shoulder, you need to like ask me for permission ahead of time and wait until I give verbal consent that it is okay, which he totally respects. And as a result, she falls in love with him that much faster for doing so. 
The last book is one of my favorite subgenres, which is romantic suspense. And this one is about a serial killer. So The Killer Next Door by Amanda Stevens is about Sydney and Trent. So Sydney is on suspension because she's been duped into doing a dangerous high-speed car chase, which is totally against the rules. And she doesn't catch the criminal, but instead crashes the car and breaks her ankle. So while she is in the hospital, her old partner Trent walks in and offers to help her work on the case because sydney has been suspended, but she totally wants to go after this guy. And Trent, as a private investigator, can do whatever he wants and look into any cases. And the plot twist in here is that Trent was fired from the force because Sydney reported him for drinking on the job. And Trent, instead of being angry, is actually grateful because he said this was the wake up call that he needed in order to get clean and sober and turn his life around. So not only is Trent a successful private investigator, he also has a really popular true crime podcast. And his latest podcast case is about a serial killer that was not a case that Sydney and Trent worked on, but one that Sydney's dad worked on. Now, Sydney's dad is dead, but Sydney still has all of his old case notes. And Trent asks her to give him access to those so they can actually work on the serial case investigation together as well. So during this whole investigation, it was actually really good. Like usually I can kind of figure out what's going on and who did what, but this one like really had me guessing until the end. So this is a perfect combination of romantic suspense, a whodunit, and a really good romance. All right, that is a wrap on some exciting new releases for October. But remember, there are many more books from Harlequin coming out this month. So make sure to check them all out at harlequin.com. And remember, if you enjoy hearing about romance books, then make sure to hit the subscribe button below because that is all we talk about on this channel. All right. Happy reading.